Welcome to Business Analytics. This is Hari Rajagopalan and I will be your instructor for this video. So we're still in descriptive analytics and then uh, you know we're still in hypothesis testing and again as I've mentioned before this is kind of at the cusp between descriptive and predictive analytics um, and now we're going to look at hypothesis testing if you have a binomial distribution or binary variables. So let's go jump in straight and let's talk about an example. So we're going to look at a binary data and in this binary data uh, let's take an example. Say your supplier guarantees that 2% or less of all parts they produce will be defective. So essentially what you're looking at here is uh, parts are 2% uh, of all the parts. So it's, is it defective or not? Yes or no? That's binary data. So your quality control unit collects a random sample of 40 parts and finds that one out of 40 is defective. So is this then um, essentially uh, um, uh, is this one out of 40? Uh, does it belong to the original 2% or does it belong to a new population? And so the population proportion is 2% or 0 0.02. Your sample proportion is 2.5. Well, obviously 2.5 is greater than 2%, but is this because of sampling error or is it because something's really happening? So that's your hypothesis test. Now let's go take a look at Excel and see how the data is set up. So here we have the data, parts 1 to 40, and whether defective or not, part 5 is defective out of the 40 parts. So here you have 1 out of 40, which is defective. And that's pretty much how we represent the data here. So let's move on and talk about how we are going to do the hypothesis test here. So the first thing we do, this is a one-tailed upper tail test because what we're saying is your null hypothesis or default is that defective rate is 2% or less, right? Equal to 2% or less, which means we're really looking to see whether the hypothesis is whether this comes sample proportion comes from a population which has population proportion greater than 2%. So this is an upper tail test. So here we have percentage of defective parts is more than 2%. Uh, and that's what we are looking at. Null hypothesis is that it's not more than 2%. And then so that becomes easy for us to do type 1 error. You conclude that it's more than 2% when it's not. Type 2 error is you conclude that it's not more when it is. And your significance or alpha 5%, you're willing to accept a 5% chance that you will decide that a defective part, the def proportion of defective parts is more than 2% when it's not. Okay, so let's go on to how we are going to solve this. We use the p-value method and the critical value method again. But before we do that, we use standard error. Now standard error for binomial distribution, you have to use population proportion multiplied by 1 minus population proportion divided by sample size, which gives you about 0 0.0221. And this is what we are going to use. So your p-value method again, now remember here, this is your center of normal distribution, 2%. This is 2.5. You're looking at an upper tail, so you're looking at the right-hand side. So you are going to use 1 minus norm dist. So instead of sample mean, you're putting sample proportion. Instead of population mean, you put population proportion and standard error. So plug in the values. Um, here, you're going to put in... So this 0.25... 0 0.025 here, I want people to understand and be clear that this 0 0.025 has nothing to do with alpha. This is your sample proportion comes here, your population proportion comes here, your standard error comes here, and that gives you 0.5893. One minus that gives you 41.4106. So p-value is 41.06%, which is a lot greater than alpha, and you failed rejection all hypothesis. You can do the critical value method here. Now, since it's an upper tail test, you only calculate your upper critical level. You're going to use 1 minus alpha there, 95%. Plug in the population proportion of standard error. 
and the upper critical value is 5.64%. So any value which is greater than 5.64 is rejected. Anything less than 5.64 is you fail to reject. And here you have 2.5 as a sample value and therefore you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So you cannot conclude that proportional defective parts have increased. The reason this is 2.5% is only because of sampling error. And so you, you pass the batch. You don't say that this guy's um, errors have increased. So let's look at it visually, one-tailed, upper-tailed test. So this is 2% right at the center. All binomial, when you start sampling, these are the sample proportions, and they all become normally distributed. So this is 0.2%. Your sample value is right here, 2.5%, and your alpha of 5% is right here. Now, your p-value, which is this whole blue line, is 41.06%, and your critical, upper critical value is 5.64, which is right here, percent. So you can see this as a visual example. We are going to do the same thing uh, when it comes to, we're going to take the same example, and we're going to change it to a two-tailed test. Here you say that supplier has 2% of parts delivered. They are going to use a new process. No one is sure whether this will reduce or increase the defects. And so quality control is testing to see if there is a change. So same example, same set of data, except there's a change now. So your hypothesis is a two-tailed test. Alpha is still 5%. Let's go and run all of this. Um, I am not going to read through the alternate, except that it's change instead of greater. Null hypothesis not changed. Type 1 and type 2 error is pretty much the same. You can read it. It's not going to be a problem. And also you can read it from the uh, PowerPoint slides. Uh, and so let's go here and work to calculate the standard error. There is no change here. Your p-value method, you're going to do 1 minus non-dist because your sample proportion is more than your population proportion. And essentially, you're going to take this p-value and you're going to compare it to alpha by 2 because it's a two-tailed test, right? And in your critical value method, you're going to calculate both upper, upper critical limit and lower critical limit. You notice here, lower critical limit is negative 2.337. That's okay. And you're going to compare this 2.5% with the 6.337%. So obviously this here is closer to population than 6.337. So we fail to reject null hypothesis and we cannot conclude that proportion of defective parts has changed. Now we're going to look at, so here is the visual representation of the two-tailed test, very similar to the one-tailed test, except here alpha by two Alpha is split into two parts, and you have to calculate both the upper and lower critical limit. And we are looking at 2.5% and not 5% here. So now we did an upper control limit. We sorry, we did a one-tailed upper tail test. We did a two-tail test. Now we're going to do a lower tail test. So in this example, we have a machine turning out 20% defective parts. So this is kind of a bad machine. It's been having 20% defective parts. Machine has been replaced with a new machine and we we want to see if all this extra investment we paid has changing and we take a sample of 64 parts. We find four of them defective. That's 6.25%. And so is this, can we just conclude that um, things have uh, changed and it has reduced? No, we can't because this could just be a sampling error. So let's do a hypothesis test to see whether 6.25 comes from a population which is really less than population proportion of 20%. So it's a lower tail test here. So your hypothesis is assuming that new machine has re reduced the proportion of defective parts from 20%. Your null hypothesis says it has not reduced the proportion. Type 1 error concludes that you have reduced it when it really did not. Type 2 error states that the new machines has not reduced the proportion of defective parts when it really has. 
And now we are going to look at a significance level of 1%, alpha of 1%. Essentially saying you're willing to accept a 1% chance that you will decide the machine has reduced proportion of defective parts when it has not. So let's run the tests again. Uh, the cal first calculate standard error, 0.2 and 1 my you use the formula. Standard error comes out to be 5%. The p-value method, you're going to use norm.dist. Since it's a lower tail test, you're not going to do 1 minus. So you're going to plug in 0 0.0625, which is sample proportion. 20% here. Standard error is 5% true. And that gives you 0 0.00298, which is 0.298%. So 0.298% is less than alpha. So you can reject the null hypothesis and say that Things have actually really reduced. Critical value method. Now, since it's a lower tail test, you're not going to calculate the upper critical limit. You're going to focus on the lower critical limit. Remember, alpha is 1%. You don't have to do 1 minus alpha for lower critical limit. You put norm.inv, you plug in the values, and you get 8.368%. So 8.368% is closer to 20% than 6.25%, and therefore we reject the null hypothesis. Now, if you want to look at this visually, here we look at this. Here we go. Alpha 1%. This is 2% population proportion. Here is your sample, 6.25%. P-value is 0.28%. And here is the critical lower critical value of 8.368% right here. And here, this x-axis is proportion of sample means. Now, of course, the same example, we are going to take it and then look at it as a two-tailed test. The difference is in how we're setting it up. So here the management does not want to spend a lot of money on a new machine. And the engineer argues that modifying the process by taking this defective machine out could potentially reduce the proportion of defective parts. Now your shop floor manager says, if you take the machine out, it's going to increase it. And so you really don't know whether modifying the process is going to change the proportion of defective parts. An operative word here is change. So here we're going to look at it as a two-tailed test. Otherwise, the data is all the same. Alpha is 1%. So let's go over this very, very quickly. Uh, I am going to let you all review this from the PowerPoint slide. We are, instead of it being less, we are looking at changed and everything else is the same. And here we are going to run, calculate the standard error first step, your p-value use norm dist, and when you get the p-value, you're going to compare it to alpha by 2. And so when you compare it to alpha by 2 instead of alpha, right, remember in a one-tail test you compare it to alpha, in a two-tail test you compare it to alpha by 2, it is still less than alpha by 2, and you can reject the null hypothesis. Your critical value method, since it's a two-tailed test, you have to calculate the upper control and lower control limit. You got to calculate both using norm.inv. Upper control limit will use 1 minus alpha by 2, which is 0.995. Lower control limit, the probability is 0 0.005. And so you get 32.871% and 7.1209%. Which one are you going to use? Well, you're going to look at the sample proportion is much smaller than less than population. So you're going to use the lower control limit. So 7.12 is closer to the middle than this. So you conclude that you can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that proportion of defective products has changed here. So if you look at this, the only difference here is that you have a lower control and upper control limit. You're going to put alpha by 2. Here is your sample value. You get the p-value, and you're comparing this p-value to this alpha by 2, or you're taking the sample mean here, sample proportion here, and you're comparing it with the critical value of 7.12, lower critical limit here. And with this, we finish the example for binomial distribution, and I'll kind of walk you through the Excel file. Now that we have gone through those four problems, I um, just want to show you the Excel setup. So here are the 40 parts for the first one. 
and one is defective. And so you get the population proportion, the sample proportion, the sample size, which is 40 alpha. This is an upper tail test. We are not going to use alpha by two. We're going to use alpha. You have the alternate hypothesis, null hypothesis. You make sure you calculate your standard error. And then here is your p-value. Now remember, because this is an upper tail test, you are going and that your sample proportion is more than your population proportion, you are going to use one minus non-list. So you'll find that's 41%, which is greater than alpha. You fail to reject your null hypothesis. Similarly, for your critical value, because you look, you're focusing on the right side, you're going to use one minus alpha here. And that gives you an upper critical limit of 5.64%. So you notice that 2.5% is definitely closer to 2% than 5.64. We fail to reject our null hypothesis. And therefore, we cannot conclude that our proportional defective parts is more than 2%. Very similar when you do the two-tailed test, ex except your hypothesis is not concluding uh, that things are more, but it has to conclude that we cannot conclude that the proportion of effective parts has changed, right? Because that's really what you're testing in a two-tailed test is not more or less, but basically that it's changed. And so same thing, except now you're gonna focus on alpha by two instead of alpha. Your alternate and null hypothesis and type 1, type 2 error are here. And so here now you're comparing your p-value to alpha by 2. And also you do calculate your upper and lower critical limit using your alpha by 2. Upper critical limit has 1 minus alpha by 2. Lower critical limit is alpha by 2. And since sample proportion is more than your population proportion, then um, you are going to... Uh, since sample proportion is more than you're going to use the upper control limit, upper critical limit. And obviously here, 2.5 is closer to 2 than 6.34. So you fail to reject your null hypothesis. As we see here, you fail to reject your null hypothesis. Now for the lower tail tests, we have a sample size of 64 instead of 60. And then we have four defective items. As you can see here, four defective items and therefore your sample proportion is 6.25%. Very similar, since this is a one tail test, we are going to use alpha. Your p-value, since this is a lower tail test and your sample proportion is less than your population value, you're looking at the left-hand side, you don't have to do one minus or for alpha here because you're looking at the left-hand side. And in the two tail test in a similar scenario, you're going to use alpha by two and then here the lower limit it has alpha by two and then you're going to use the lower limit here to compare it to the sample proportion but because i'm going through this a little quickly because we've already finished this uh with the powerpoint slides and so we finished binomial distribution and in the next lecture we'll talk about t-tests using one sample hypothesis testing mm -hmm.